Hey what is going on guys, it is Superb Chip here and welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, we're going to be going over the most evil choices that you the player character can make in Fallout 4 and the absolute most abhorrent things that you can do to other people in the wasteland. Now Fallout 4, generally speaking, is a good person's game. The main faction that the game promotes is the Minutemen, these people are the unkillable faction, every other faction can be killed except the Minutemen and the Minutemen are definitely the most moral faction, so the game really pushes the character to be a good person, but there are a few things that you can do in the game that make you an absolute awful human being. Now we're going to be going over all of these in this video, so if you do enjoy please make sure to leave it a like and subscribe to the channel we are so close to 8,000 subscribers so yes please subscribe and let's get straight into the video so the first evil choice that we are going to discuss is in the quest kid in a fridge whilst wandering the wasteland the cries for help can be heard from a fridge sat isolated in the wastes upon investigating further someone is trapped inside and begs the player character to open the door after obliging out emerges a 200 year old ghoul child who has been encased in that tiny fridge with no food sunlight water or anything for over two entire centuries what? Logic aside, Billy begs us to help him return to his parents and we can be a good Samaritan and help this ghoul child return to his long lost family who is apparently somehow still alive. However, this video is about being as truly as evil as possible and oh boy this quest allows many opportunities for that. Firstly, as we walk towards the quest marker we are approached by Bullet who offers us some caps for Billy to be sold into slavery. We can accept and off goes Billy to be Bullet's slave for all eternity. We just sold a child into slavery within minutes of meeting him. Now this is in the game where the Minutemen, the most goody two shoes faction, are unkillable and ever present, quite a deviation from the norm some would say. But you can be even more evil if you refuse Bullet's offer and continue to Billy's home where his ghoulified parents await him and Bullet will reappear and demand Billy and his family be given over to him. Now this request can be granted by merely standing down and in this scenario Billy as he just felt the joy of being reunited with his parents after two centuries of isolation. We not only enslave Billy, and both of his parents. We also do it for absolutely nothing, as in this scenario, Bullet won't pay us anything because we refuse his initial offer. Additionally, you can also return Billy home, defeat or scare off Bullet, present a seemingly happy ending, and then kill his parents, leaving Billy once again alone. This quest truly allows for some horrific outcomes. Now, the next evil choice we're going to be talking about occurs in the quest Diamond City Blues. Now, during the quest, we are presented with a variety of opportunities to be a truly evil individual. Three separate opportunities involving killing people and then gloating to their living family members are presented to us. Three separate challenges chances to do this. Now when the quest begins we are informed about a chem deal occurring near Backstreet Apparel. Now upon arriving we see Nelson Latimer and some Triggerman awaiting the arrival of Henry Cook to begin their deal. However we can interrupt this transaction and murder Nelson and his guards. Upon returning to Diamond City Malcolm Latimer comes up to us and demands to know if we were the one who killed Nelson. A question we can respond to yes and Malcolm angrily assures us that we will be killed. However we can also end his life after telling him we killed his only child. Truly horrible. Alternatively we can blame others such as Murawski, Paul Pembroke and Henry Cook and Malcolm will pay us to murder innocent men, believing them to be the culprit instead. Another amazing thing we can do. Additionally, during this quest we can kill Henry Cook at a variety of stages, either in his bar, at the chem deal, or assassinate him on Malcolm's orders. Irrelevant of the way in which he dies, if he does, his daughter Colette Cook will eventually show up in town later, and she will ask us if we know Cook. A question we can respond to, yes, and that we also killed him. She will draw a gun and demand to know why she should let you live, and we can smugly respond, what if I don't tell you? To which she attacks. We then, after informing her we murdered her father and making fun of her, can kill her. Oh my Jesus. And finally, in the quest, if Paul Pembroke is killed, we can also inform Darcy we are the ones who did it, and then we can say that we didn't even think twice about doing it. This quest has far too many opportunities to be a truly awful human being and gloat to the relatives of the deceased that we killed. Now the next evil act we're going to be talking about is maybe the worst one on this list and it is the convince Virgil to commit suicide option. Now during the main story we are introduced to Virgil, a former institute scientist turned into a super mutant slash ogre. Virgil desperately wants to return to his human form, but the cure he made for himself to revert back to his human form was left inside the institute when he escaped and he needs you to get it back for him. After all, he is the one who draws up the plans to create the teleporter which is what allows you to get into the institute in the first place. He's an incredible help to you and it's only fair to repay him. Venturing into the institute we can find the cure located in the FE lab and eventually we can bring this back to Virgil to finally fulfill his wish and return him back to a human being. However, to be a truly evil individual we can lie to Virgil claiming that the cure is gone and there is no way he can ever return to normal. We can not only say this but also tell him his condition will only worsen, his intellect, fine motor skills and humanity will fade away until he is nothing but a dumb brute like the rest of the super mutants in the commonwealth. Virgil is despondent at this news and we can push further and convince him to take his own life. Virgil gulps as he comprehends the gravity of what we're saying, we're right and he will devolve into nothing 
nothing more than an instinctual, moronic mutant like the rest of them. Virgil accepts our truth and understands he must die before such a reality comes to fruition. However, he asserts he doesn't have the stomach to take his own life. You must do it. You, the malevolent being that you are, draw your weapon and kill the broken Virgil before whipping out the cure that has been in your inventory the entire time and dropping it next to his corpse. This is truly one of the most cruel and awful things you can do in all of Fallout 4. You are an actual menace to society if you choose to do this. Now another evil option that we can do is choosing to make Mama Murphy overdose. Mama Murphy is introduced to us during one of the first quests of the game, Freedom Calls, and during this quest we learned of Mama Murphy's ability to harness the sight, something that gives her powerful psychic visions of the future. However, the only way to access such a power is to take chems. Initially it sounds like an old woman desperate for a fix of Jet and Psycho, yet Mama Murphy makes good on her word and is indeed psychic, giving us information about future quests, even the recall code for the Corsa in Green Tech Genetics, if of course we supply with chems. Eventually, after giving her five chems and learning all we can from her, Mama Murphy eventually says that the site has nothing left to offer us before collapsing of a heart attack and dying. All of the Minutemen rush around her body and are in shock at losing yet another member of their party, and we caused it. Preston tells us as Mama Murphy advertises her abilities to stop taking chems as they kill her one day, and so they did. All thanks to us. Jesus, we are horrible. Another evil choice that we can make is to make John Caleb Bradburton suffer. John Caleb Bradburton was the inventor and founder of Nuka-Cola, becoming a billionaire in the 21st century and using his wealth and connections to achieve immortality before the bombs fell. The US government gave him technology from Project Cobalt, a scheme designed to give Bradburton an eternal existence. However, what the government failed to mention is that Bradburton was no longer a free walking mobile being, but a severed head on ice with no body. Bradburton suffered alone for two centuries inside the secret section of his office until we turn up in 2287 alongside Sierra Petrovita, the world world's foremost Nuka-Cola expert and most irritating human being in the entire world. Sierra is starstruck to see Brad Burton still alive, however, upon seeing us, Brad Burton begs us to end his suffering by pulling the switch to the right of him, opening a door and giving us loot such as the Nuka Nuke launcher. Now he wants this so he can finally be at peace after two centuries of isolation with nothing but himself and his thoughts driving him absolutely insane. Sierra, however, is not too much of a fan of this idea and begs you to keep Brad Burton alive, an offer if we are truly evil we would accept. After two hundred years of isolation, Brad Burton is finally offered a way out of his eternal prison, nevertheless we ignore his request and leave Sierra Petrovia, an incredibly annoying pest, beside Brad Burton for decades to come to irritate and irk him. His one chance of death was squandered, and instead an eternity of misery awaits him. Another evil choice that we can make is to let Austin die. After entering Vault 81, giving some blood to the Doctor, leaving and returning, we find young Austin bedbound and in dire need of medical attention. After a genetically modified mole rat bit him and infected him with an incurable disease, Bobby the Vault Junkie reveals to us an entire hidden section of Vault 81 where Vault Tech was planning on infecting the entire vault with diseases. Thankfully, however, this never came to fruition. We, the player character, must find the cue for Austin before it's too late and the young boy perishes due to his illness. Eventually, after exploring the vault for some time and taking out many mole rats, we find Curie, who gives us the the Vault 81 cure, only one dose to save the boy. However, whilst adventuring through this vault, some of the mole rats bit us, and we got infected too. A minor inconvenience to us as an adult, a mere 10 HP reduction is the only side effect, but some of us aren't too fond of this debuff, and we can use the cure on ourselves and leave Austin to die. The vault is not too pleased that we let a child die and saved ourselves from what can be only described as a small nuisance, so now we have killed a child. We are truly climbing the ladder of evilness fast. Now the final evil choice that you can make in Fallout 4 is letting Sean die. Now the Institute leader Sean is a terrible person who does pretty awful things to the people on the surface, so letting him die really isn't that bad, but letting the child synth who has no experience in life, who's done nothing wrong and merely is a creation of the Institute with the mind of a child, letting him die at the end of the game where you can choose to say, nah, I'm not your parent, and just leave him to get blown up is truly a terrible thing you can do. Rejecting your synth son when he wants to leave with you during the end of the game as he begs for you, as he promises to be good, as he promises that you are indeed his parent, as he begs you to take him away from the demise of the Institute, you can simply say, nah, not interested, and leave as he gets blown to smithereens. Oh my lord, this is truly a horrendous thing to do. Now, if you truly want to be the most evil player in all of Fallout history, you can do every single one of these choices in your game. This list truly encompasses the most morally bankrupt things that you can do in all of Fallout 4. I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope it was very informative and you may have learned some secret evil choices that you could make that you may not have known about. If you did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, we are so close to 8,000 subscribers, so make sure to subscribe. Anywho, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one in a bit.